Shadow and I have driven high up into the mountains to do astrophotography on a cold January winter night here in the desert. And sometimes we just have to stop and stare at the beautiful sunset. It is absolutely spectacular. We're not quite where we're going to camp yet, but I just had to stop and film this and show this to you. Beautiful, beautiful sunset. And on the opposite side are the mountains that we're heading up into. And you can see they look a little ominous over there. Can you see the little whiskey snow, white whiskey snow on the top there? It's cold enough. There's little patches here as well. But it's forecasted to clear. And it looks like it is clearing above. But until it fully clears, my gosh. I mean, that's just... I don't even know how to put words to it. Shadow, are you already digging holes? We're not even there yet, little buddy. There's no stopping him. And you know, this sunset looks a little bit like what we're going to be going after tonight. I'll tell you more about it. We're going to try to go after two objects. One, the Great Orion Nebula, is arguably the most brilliant and spectacular deep space object to photograph. The colors and the proximity to Earth, it's not that far. The size and the activity that's going on within it. Thousands of new stars being born. It's just incredible. So we've got just a couple of more miles to go up this road and winding up through there and closer to the foot of that mountain there. We'll be at about 5,000 feet above sea level. Should be a beautiful night. Wow. Right above us, it's looking really clear. Fingers crossed. Well, we've arrived where we're gonna set up and it gets cold fast. You can see me, I'm already layering up. Got Shadow all safe with his coyote vest on. Go ahead, little buddy. So before it gets too cold, the first thing we're gonna do is set up a campfire right there. And then I'll have a place to retreat to to stay warm. And then we're gonna set up the scope on the other side of the truck right here. I need those clouds to blow away. They will. Orion will rise on the horizon there and then we'll start imaging when it's about right there. And it'll then cross throughout the night sky right along there. So the okay, I've got a fire lit. We'll let that build up. Take a couple of minutes. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is set up the scope right here. Gotta get a level, then we'll pull our line. It'll be dark enough to polar line, star line, and wait for Orion. It looks like the first star is out. That is most likely Venus. Okay, I gotta get going. I'm busy setting up the telescope. But I just have to stop again and show you this sunset with the fire. It's just so beautiful. I mean, I can't even put words to it. Makes me feel like I'm in Africa or something. All right, I gotta get back to setting up. Well, I'm really glad I have this fire because it's literally below freezing. I've already fed Shadow and gave him a bowl of water. And while I was setting up, and, and polar aligning and star aligning, the top of the water literally froze. <laughs> it's cold. It gets cold fast in these high elevation desert uh, areas. But we're on the Great Orion Nebula, and I'm very excited about it. Now this is a difficult nebula. It's an easy nebula to photograph on the one hand because it's so big and brilliant, but it's difficult in that it has a brilliant core it's called the trapezium, where there are thousands, literally thousands of new stars that have been given birth. And they're, they're just brilliantly bright and, and they're dense. So that causes such a bright core. And then you have this diffuse nebula all around it that is reflecting the light from the trapezium, the stars in there. And so you want to pick up as much of that beautiful molecular dust and the gases all around that have such great color and you'll see it here in a minute uh, but you don't want to 
oversaturate that core. So it's a balancing act. So tonight I'm taking very short exposures, 15 second exposures, and we're going to take a lot of them and stack them in a hopes that I don't oversaturate that core so we can still see you know, the, the, enough detail in the core, but at the same time pick up the much dimmer but beautiful nebulosity around it. So we're going to let the, the rig do its thing there for a minute. So for the for the time being, and you can tell that I'm even kind of stuttering because it's so cold, <laughs> we're just going to sit right here by the fire and try and stay warm. Okay, let's make our way over to the rig. See how it's doing. Okay, you can see now what I was talking about. How brilliantly bright that trapezium core is. This is a star nursery. And there are, as I mentioned, literally thousands of stars in that area right there that have been given birth. And this has been intensely studied by the Hubble telescope and the Spitzer telescope and others. And they have even observed around these new stars uh, the creation of solar systems as dust and molecular dust is forming disks around the new stars and they will eventually coalesce into planets. So we're literally observing not only the creation of new stars but of new solar systems. Really exciting. The nebula itself, the Orion Nebula, is about 24 light years in diameter and it's about 1300 1,300 or so light years from Earth. So let's just let it do its thing and we'll come and check on it and I gotta stay warm by the fire. Well, we're on our way home. Uh, we had to cut it short tonight because Shadow wasn't feeling very good. That's not the typical Shadow right there. Just after I filmed that last, you know, we were looking at the uh, monitor, Shadow came walking kind of slowly up to me I could tell something was wrong and he's just not acting normally that's that's not your normal hyper shadow so I don't know if he got into something uh, it's too cold out there to have been bitten by a rattlesnake or something like that and he, he doesn't exhibit those symptoms he does have his rattlesnake vaccine by the way and there is such a thing but I think he might have eaten something he's always trying to eat something frankly but um, I think maybe he ate something. So I'm going to take him home and make sure he's okay. If I have enough time on the image, I'll process it in the morning and show it to you. If not, then you won't be seeing this video. Well, we're home. I got Shadow home. He likes to sleep right there on the top of the couch. But you can see he doesn't feel good. I'm going to give him a good check over. Something's not right. Well, Shadow is back. It's Sunday morning, and we were out. It was Friday night when we went out, and I brought him back, as you know, and all through the night I checked on him, and he comes Saturday morning. He still wasn't doing great. So I took him to the uh, emergency vet because my regular vet wasn't open, and Shadow, you're crushing me. Um, they checked him over. They checked thoroughly. They couldn't find any signs of any you know, external problems like a bite or you know, an injury. Uh, they concluded, like I had, that he'd probably eaten something. And, um, but he, was, uh, he wasn't getting worse, so they advised me just to take him home and keep an eye on him, which I did. And by midday Saturday, he was improving dramatically. And now, well, there you go. The typical shadow. And he's helping me to process this image. Now, this is really, really interesting. When I got back, and I actually went through the uh, 15 second exposures and I had a series of them. I really only have about nine and a half minutes of usable sub exposures. And I thought, well, what the heck? I went ahead and stacked them. And of course, with only nine and a half minutes of time, the image is not nearly as full and brilliant and complete as it could be, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway, just as an experiment. You know, for those of you that are into astrophotography, 
what can you do with nine and a half minutes in approximately Bortle 2, a high elevation, you know, over 5,000 feet above sea level? It makes a difference. You know, there's that much less atmosphere and atmospheric distortion that you got to worry about. Uh, there is uh, that much less light pollution and, you know, it makes a difference. So this is what nine and a half minutes can do. I'll show it to you now.